Hi, it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net. I'll show you how to use some clear gesso in your colouring books. And what that does is it changes the tooth of the paper, allowing you to put down mediums that you otherwise might not be able to use on that particular type of paper. Because remember our colouring books are mostly made from paper that's not suitable for watercolours or alcohol markers. So by using the gesso, not only does it make it easier to apply other acrylic paints to the paper, but you can also use other mediums that you wouldn't be able to, particularly in books with thinner paper, like the ones from Create Space. So you can change the texture of the paper or just firm it up a bit with the gesso so that other mediums will go on it. Now I know this works because I've already done this uh, about this time last year and the audio didn't work out on that film but here's one that I've gessoed in this book with clear gesso and as you can see it doesn't change the colour of the paper it just puts like a little line on it you might be able to see that just where it finishes so it's like a little clear film now you can get gesso in different types. The one that I use is very smooth and you don't feel it on the paper when you run your hand across it. But of course it does change the paper. If you're using a gesso that's got like a little bit of a grit, I know it sounds weird, but you might want to run a sanding block from the hardware shop just across there to get off any grit in between layers. But really you're better off using the clear gesso. You can get gesso in uh, white, you can get it in black, you can get it in all different colours but the one that we want is the clear and I found that this one is very finely textured. It doesn't leave a grit finish on the paper. So the first thing we have to do is prepare our book and this is where I got myself into a muddle last year because I really overthought the whole process of preparing the book. I had it cling wrapped down and painted tape around the edges to prevent buckling and all sorts of things and of course it ended up ruining the paper and uh, the low tack masking tape ended up not being low tack at all and uh, yeah it all turned out a mess. Now this is my old uh, Trolls book that if you've seen the review of this you would have known that uh, it fell apart after I finished uh, filming it and I always keep these sorts of things just so that um, I have something to experiment with. Now here's another one that was gessoed from that book and you can see like the little film around here that finishes where the gesso is. So because that's say a little bit rough on the edges I just pick up my little sanding and I could smooth that down. Okay, so let's gesso up a page. So this one hasn't been done. So what I'm going to do is, I've just got these plastic folders that students put their assignments in for me. So I'm just going to pop one of those around the rest of the book. And of course the binding has fallen apart completely now on this one. Gesso, just getting on other pages and sticking to them. Now, of course, you could do the whole thing that I did last year, which is cling wrap them to the desk and make sure that you uh, put painter's tape on it and all the rest of it. But quite frankly, it was all a lot of hassle. Um, this time around, I'm just taking this approach and I'm going to flatten it out with books on top of it afterwards. So grab your gesso and what we'll do is we'll gesso this bit in the middle and leave these bits on the outside so that you can tell uh, the effect of not using it. So you can apply this either with a foam brush, a real brush or something like a piece of plastic. I'm using my trusty Officeworks card and just grabbing a bit and pushing it down. Now I'm going to apply two coats of this, the next coat when it already has dried. So there's that. 
Now I'll do the same with the Create Space book. We'll leave that to dry and then come back and I'll apply one more layer in the same way, just with the credit card or the plastic card straight across it. I'm back the gesso has dried and you remember we just gessoed this bit here on the troll book and just the flowers there are not gessoed so that you can see the difference because this book is really falling apart I'm going to take the whole page out to do the experiments with the gesso is also dried on our little Hannah Lynn book now I did put a fold back clip down there just to straighten it a little bit more. Because the paper is a lot thinner on this book, it's a trade stock paper, it may buckle a bit more than the other one, so I will press it down with some other colouring books if that happens. But you can see on this image that I coloured a while ago, on that page, or just looks like an experiment and happening there. How the alcohol marker does come through and that was uh, with Copics. So when we do this page you'll see what the difference is. Also I should tell you that you can make your own gesso, you don't need to purchase it. So I was going to make mine and I just haven't got around to it. So I sent my husband to the art store to get me some marble dust which is one of the primary ingredients of DIY gesso. Of course, being a guy, he came back with the biggest bag he could find, um, so I must think I'm going to gesso every book in my collection. You only need a small bag, you know, to make it up. You'll need a container. There's a number of different recipes on YouTube that you can follow, but make sure you follow the one for clear gesso. You don't want the one for white uh, because that won't give you... You can, of course, make uh, coloured gesso, if you like, as well, by adding colour to your DIY gesso mix. Or you can just purchase it ready-made. So a lot of people use an acrylic uh, background colour, like a Posca pen or something like that, or acrylic paint. But you can also use a black gesso, if you like, on your backgrounds or any other coloured uh, gesso. So let's get on with the experiments. So first of all, let's just see how the paper changes with just adding gel pen to it. So I've got two gel pens here and we'll just give it a colour. So you can apply the gel pen but it is putting in pen marks, so little lines there. And if we go to the area that wasn't gessoed, so say we colour this little flower, you can see that the colour laid down a lot easier without leaving a pen mark behind. So that was on the medium quality paper that was in the Trolls book. So in that gel pen little test, the gel pen actually looks better when the paper has not been gessoed. It has a lot more coverage and there's no little white lines from your pen mark. Now if we go over that again once it dries, those little white lines might evaporate. Let's try it on the Create Space book. And we'll just give her a little bit of purple hair. And again, you might not see it on camera, but it is putting like a little white line where the pen marks on the paper. So it could just be the colour, so try it with a red. And seems like it was the colour, because the red, which is a glitter-based one, is going down perfectly without any 
pen marks on it on the gessoed area as well as on the non-gessoed area. They look exactly the same and that's with the glitter gel pen. In the Create Space book there's no pen strips. So with this particular experiment it looks like the glitter gel pens lay down without any problems at all. So you can also use normal pencil when you have gessoed a book. So just taking a Prismacolor will do the same. And this goes down so smooth. It's like it's sliding over the paper. And we'll try it on the non-gessoed area. And on the gessoed area, I don't know whether you can capture it live or not, but it covers more. The pigment seems to go over a lot easier, but also it seems to look more vibrant on the gessoed area than on the non-gessoed area. So coverage was far better with my Prismacolor on the gessoed area. Let's have a look at the Create Space book. And again, the coverage is going on really easy. A little bit of tooth showing through. Let's see how well it combines. So one of the problems with this paper is sometimes you feel like you can't get the layers that you want. But adding the gesso seems to add more grip to the pencil. And the colour certainly looks more vibrant. Let's try it over here. So this is the area that was gessoed. And this was the area non-gessoed. Now the interesting thing is the gessoed area is laying up a lot better. It goes down really easy to touch. And bear in mind, I colour standing up when I'm filming, so it's all over the place. But on this non-gessoed area in this book, see how it's not covering quite as much, but also it's producing like little mini pills on the paper from just one extra pencil. So that's a bit of a surprise. Let's try the polychromos. We'll be trying the markers and water-based uh, products soon. So I've got two polychromos and these go down super smooth on the gessoed area, really covering very quickly, very smooth. And on the non-gessoed area they're going down far better than the Prismacolors were. Far more suitable this book for the polychromos. But you know, different books, different paper. So if you've got a book and the paper's giving you grief, maybe you want to try, you know, gessoing one of the pages and uh, seeing if you can use it then with your favourite pencil. It's going down just as easily on the Create Space book. Let's have a look if we add some more colour. Now, I have to say it's not as easy to add more colour on the Create Space book as it was with the Prismacolor. However, it is far more saturated than the Prismacolor was on the Create Space book. So let's try it over here. Going down very easily on the non-gessoed area. And sliding across the page on the gessoed area. So that's the non-gessoed bit, and that's the gessoed bit. So good results there with the polychromos as well for both of those pages. Much more vibrant on the Create Space paper than the Prismacolors, with a lot more saturation. But I feel with the Prismacolors I could add more colour to that without damaging the page. So next thing we'll try are some ink. Uh, some Tombow markers. So Tombow's are water-based markers, so they shouldn't come through to the other side in any event, but um, we'll pop them down. 
So going on the page, no problem at all. Now because this is a fine grit, or there's a, a smooth texture to this particular gesso, they're not all the same, there's no effect on the nib on my marker. Now, obviously, if you're using uh, markers a lot, then I would suggest that you use a marker where you can replace the nib because you are changing the content of the page, so or the composition of the page. So you may not damage a nib in the process. So for your alcohol markers, I would suggest things that you can change the nib on, like Copix or Spectrum Noirs, but you know, it's obviously up to you. So the Tombow didn't show through as we expected because it's water-based. Now it's going over perfectly on the medium paper, but you can feel that there is a little change in the paper and that's you know why I would be careful of your nibs. Now over here it's really blobbing and spreading out and the whole colour is completely different on the non-gessoed area as it was from the gessoed area. And the gessoed area sort of gives me more of a, a nicer colour and a nicer saturation than the non-gessoed in this book. As you can see there is no damage to the page on the reverse and uh, let's add a little bit more colour with those tombos so I can add an extra layer with the tombow marker whereas on the non gessoed area all I'm getting is a big blob and it's not blending out or moving and it's just turned into a big ugly blob. Let's try it over here on the Create Space paper. And so I can add a bit more there. And whilst I can't blend it as easily as if it was on a blending card, it is moving along really quite nicely. And you are able to blend those colours lightly together. So let's try our Neo colours. And I do have to say that I tried these on a gessoed background yesterday on the uh, second attempt at this video that didn't work out. And it really wasn't any good on the background, so I won't be trying it again today. So we'll put it on the non-gessoed area here first. And then on the gessoed area. And on our Create Space paper. Adding a bit of an orange as well. For large areas, the neo colours don't tend to work that well with the gesso background, which is what I found yesterday. So with small areas, it's quite fine. Now, I am getting some pooling here because I've got too much water on my brush. But you can see that that's going on just fine. Now, on the non gessoed section, it's spreading out, saturating. It's not damaging the paper, but you can see some light textural change on there if you look closely. Kind of looks like glitter, but it's not. It's a neo color. So let's see how it goes on the gessoed area. So on the gessoed area, it's spreading out very easily, easily dissolving. I've got a little bit too much water in that brush at the moment. So just uh, change uh, brushes and we'll do another circle. And this is just with a lightly damp brush. Now of course yours will look better because as I said before, I stand up while I film. so. I'm way away from the page. So it's dissolving it, no problems at all. There's no change, no bumping on the paper like there is with the non gessoed one. And there's nothing through to the other side. And same with over here, and that was wet quite a lot, and still no change over to the other side of the paper. Now, we should wait for that to dry ideally before we add more colour, but live dangerously. It's 
So with the Create Space paper, it's not taking extra colour that well with the neo colours. But it could be because I didn't allow it to dry properly in between the layers. Or had too much water on there in the beginning. So we'll do another experiment over here. And we'll let that one dry out fully. I will go with some greens. And they go down so smooth on the Create Space paper without adding the water. So it will be interesting to see how easy they dissolve. And remember this is just uh, my experience. Obviously I'm no expert, I might not be using the products correctly and we all have sort of different techniques so your experience might be different from mine. So it's dissolving super easy on the Trolls book, all dissolved and it's a far more pleasant experience for me than using the Neo Colours was on this particular paper. Remember on other paper the Neo Colours might you know, give me a wonderful experience but not here. Now on the non gessoed area it's not dissolving very well and it's a little bit grainy and textural and getting that sort of bumpy look to the paper that I got previously over here. So for me using the Intense in this book with the gesso is a winner. So let's see how it goes with the Create Space paper. And it's dissolving super easy. Far more pleasant for me than the Neo colours were. And no pilling on the paper. And a really intense, vibrant colour combination. So super happy with that. So they're Inktense, the Tombos, Prismas and Polys I'm really happy with on the Create Space with the Gesso. It's just the neo colours I'm not that happy with. I'm not really happy with them in either of these books. So it could be me, um, or it could just be, you know, that they're better suited to other papers. Okay, so let's try some general watercolour pencils. So I've got the Ergo Soft watercolour pencils. Now, the pencils actually felt smoother going on the gessoed area than the non-gessoed area. So they dissolved very easily on the Create Space paper. Hasn't produced any pilling. I don't know if further layers would. On the gessoed area of our Trolls book, they dissolved super easily. But on the non-gessoed area up here in the corner, they sort of look a little bit grainy and a little bit bumpy. It's not a very nice texture. It looks like it could peel. So we'll wait for it to dry and we'll come back and we'll add another layer and we'll see what happens.
I also have my, my Prismacolor watercolours and I really love those. I wish they made uh, them in a bigger set. But anyway, use these two blues over here. They go on the paper very easily. There's no problems at all with that. Going on the paper very easily, very smoothly. There's no resistance. And again, very smooth on the paper without. So we'll just uh, blend out that Prismacolor. I ran it out of film, so that might be why this video looks a little bit disjointed. I had to clean out the camera and get some more space. So this is dissolving super easy. The Prismacolor watercolor pencils are just so soft and creamy. I wish they made 150 like the regular pencils, but you can't have everything in life. So it is dissolving quite easily. There's no pooling or anything there. And let's have a look at it on the trolls. Now this was the part that wasn't gessoed, and again it's getting that uh, sort of shimmery, grainy texture to it. I can see it just from this distance. I seem to have picked up a cold in the half an hour break. I don't know whether you could see that, but the non-gessoed area was quite sort of grainy and bumpy. Now there was a plane going overhead, which is why I wasn't talking through that problem of living underneath a flight path. So before I said we'd go back and try another layer, that's dried now. So let's add a little bit more and see if the gesso supports multiple layers. Now this is the Ergo Soft Pencil. And we'll try a little bit more Ergo Soft over here. It goes down so smooth on that Create Space paper. And to be fair, we'll try it on the non gessoed area too. And I can already tell by the feel of it just under my pencil that it's not going to be a happy conclusion. So why don't we pop some extra green ink tents in there. And I love the brightness of this intense colour on here so just pop a little bit more in and we had it over here so pop a little bit more just over there on the edge and just here as well the intense glides on but of course remember you know this is it's not a standard paper that's the problem with colouring books they're all different papers that it's all different types and what works you know on one book or even from one printing place might not work from another printing place so for instance create space have a number of uh, printing facilities and each facility produces a different type of paper and they print on different types so although they're all trade stock you'll notice some slight differences between different places that publish so um, don't just say because it's create space it's all the same the facilities are actually different and have a look in the backs of your book you know if you find one that works really well for you it may be because you know they're printing out of a different location where you got your book from so the create space and the ink tents goes perfectly with an extra layer there's no pilling there and it's looking good over here on the trolls book it, it does take the extra layer, but really it doesn't look very good at all. And on the gessoed area, it does take the extra layer. It is producing some like tide marks on it. Maybe that I've got too much water on it. I really like the colour that it's producing. It's fabulous. But I don't think that I'll be able to do too many more layers. Oh no, that was just a, um, a bump of colour pooling 
I thought that was peeling, but it was just colour pooling up. So I might even be able to do more layers on that, on the gessoed area. Let's have a look at the Ergo Soft. I can't remember if I dissolved that or not. Got distracted. I think that's what my school report always said. Dis distracted, disruptive. Now, that's dissolving. I've got to say I like the intents more with this paper, but it is certainly dissolving. And over here, it's not damaging the paper at all. And I've got a cheap, rubbishy little brush here. Um, so not the best brush in the world. I do notice that um, that purple glitter that I gel pen that I put down earlier, when it's dried, those little pen marks have dried out of it. And obviously I've kept sticking my hand in it and it's smeared everywhere. So that's my bad. So we've tried the watercolours, we've tried the ink tents, we've tried the neo colours, we've tried the prismas and the polys. So let's try the alcohol markers now. So first up, what I should say is that most colouring books are not designed for wet media. They're designed for pencils and crayons. There are specialty colouring books out there like water colouring colouring books that have watercolour paper in them. And there are sometimes artist editions of paper that have a heavier quality that can take mixed media or wet media. But generally, colouring books are not designed for wet media. And that's part of the reason why we're putting gesso on these pages, is so that we can turn something that was not designed for uh, our particular intended use into something that we can use. So just bear in mind that it's not the correct paper to start with, so you might not have all the same techniques available to you. There's only so much that you can do with putting gesso on things. And the reason that I prefaced that whole conversation was with alcohol markers, you should ideally use an alcohol-based paper that can allow for blending and adding a number of layers on the paper without it all peeling up and getting those little lumpy bits all over it. Now, if you just colour solidly, so you're not blending or doing anything with your alcohol markers, then over clear gesso, it's going to be fine. So let's use a Bic marker. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of, yeah, and this is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of Bics and Sharpies. I know heaps of people are, and don't get me wrong, I've got heaps of them myself, but I'm not a fan because for one thing, you can't refill them, so you have to buy a whole new pen every time. And the other thing is that if the nib is damaged, you have to buy a whole new marker. So putting it on paper where you've changed the composition of it by putting gesso over it could affect the nib on this particular marker. Now I'm not bothered about that because I you know, don't really use them that much, but it could affect the nib. But as you can see, solidly colouring, no problem at all, goes on. It looks a little bit grainy and sandy over there. But importantly, there is no bleed through to the other side. Let's try it on the area that wasn't gessoed. Goes on far more vibrant on the non-gessoed area, so it's better on that area. Whereas we found with the Intense etc. and the Tombows, they're actually better on the gessoed area. But it goes straight through to the other side. Let's try it over here on the Create Space paper that's all been gessoed. And we'll just rub it over there. Now, it feels a bit grainy. Even though this feels smooth to the touch, even with the clear on it for something sensitive like a nib, you can sort of feel it that it is a little bit grainy. Now, you can see previously on this page that I hadn't gessoed, that it's gone through completely to the other side. This is the bit that I just did in the Bic marker, and there's the other side. Nothing, not even any shadowing or anything. So if you're doing solid lines, then the alcohol markers are fine. But if you want to do any blending, you need a blending paper, ideally. So with my Copics on the blending card, I can lay down colour and blend that 
into the other colour to create gradient type effect. It's not going to peel up with future use and even though it does come through to the other side it doesn't peel so you can blend, you can create gradients, you can do all sorts of stuff with blending card. Whereas with paper your markers etc just absorb. The other great thing about Copics and Spectrum Noirs and uh, Chameleon for memory is that you can replace the nib as it gets damaged and replace that and you can pull the whole thing out and replace the ink inside. And each ink refill sort of is equivalent to 20 odd pens so in the long term it works out far less uh, expensive than replacing uh, markers that aren't refillable. But, of course, they cost more to start with. There are more colours, though, so, you know, they've all got their for and against. But the good thing is that you can decide for yourself out of all the choices. So here we were able to put the three colours together. Let's have a look and see if we can use the Copic markers on the Create Space paper that's been gessoed, and also if it's got any qualities where we can actually blend in another colour. So we'll go orange, and I've got to say I'm a tad surprised that it's allowing me to blend that in a little bit. Now I don't think I'd be able to do much blending with it, but I am actually really surprised that I could actually even blend that. So that is huge. And again, nothing on that other side. So really happy with that. And I've got to say, I'm super surprised. So let's try it on the Trolls book. So no problem with it going on able to blend into the other colour without a tide line forming. Now I don't know how many times I'd be able to do that without it getting all messy but I'm actually pretty surprised that I can even do that. Now of course there's no bleed through to the other side, it works perfectly. The only bleed through we've ever had is from that big marker that we tried in the non gessoed area. So I'm super pleased with that um, because that blending card can work out quite expensive. So let's try it over here on the non-gessoed area and we'll go over here. Now in the non-gessoed area I was able to apply it but I wasn't able to get the blend seamlessly. So there's a line showing the difference between the colours that I added. And, you know, I think I was as quick as I was with the other ones. So to me, it's the paper composition that allows me not to be able to blend. Now, I did get it to dissolve a little bit, but not to get that gradual blend that I was able to get very quickly over here on that little orange flower. Now, of course, um, there's bleed through, so we wouldn't be able to use that page. Okay, so that's the Copix. The Spectrum Noir markers have the same composition, but I will test them just so that you can, uh, you know, know yourself for sure. So these are also refillable, and we'll just go pretty and pink. And you can also change the nibs. With these Illustrator ones, the nibs are a little bit hard to get in Australia, which, you know, seems to be the story of my life with so many things. I'm just going to be really quick and rough here. Now, usually you use three to four colours when you blend out alcohol markers. I only use two. If I'd used three, like uh, over here with the Copics, it probably would have been a more seamless blend. But it is blending there, and I was able to bring the colour back into the previous colour. 
there's no color on the other side. So let's go over here to the Create Space paper, which really surprised me with the blendability of the alcohol markers. And very seamless blend on that as well. So again, a big surprise that I was able to get a result similar to what I get with the more expensive Express Blender card. Now, I don't know how many times I would be able to go back and forth on that and keep layering, but, you know, for someone standing up colouring, I'm sort of pretty happy with what I got in just the two seconds that that took, so. You can also use paints and gesso, so if you want to use acrylic paint, it'll stick more on the gessoed area, so like your Posca pens or your acrylic paints like this. Now, that's great if you love to use uh, mixed media and all of those great things. So I'll just uh, dab out a bit of this colour. So I've got the ruddiest brush. So I'll just try it over here. So it's just going down perfectly fine. My brush is terrible. I don't know what I've been using this for, but it definitely should go in the bin. So it's sticking onto the page, no problem at all. And we'll try it over here. Sticking onto the page, no problem at all. Any sort of uh, funny movement on there is me. The brush is really stiff at the end. So I'll just try it with a Posca pen. So I've got a Posca pen here, which is just acrylic paint, basically. This is a glitter one. So, And the great thing about this, once you put that gesso on, you can use other mediums that you wouldn't be able to, but other mediums might show up more vibrant or they might have sort of a, a quality that makes them sort of allow you to stick other things to them that you wouldn't be able to. So Posca glitter pen is going on no problems at all and over here going on smooth as as we would expect because it goes on smooth you know normally anyway. This is a chalk pen, so I'll just give it a try while we've got it out. Goes on there, no problem at all. Well, it is leaving like little pen tip marks. And I do feel some resistance in the paper that um, I don't normally feel. So I'll just try it over here. And over here I still, it does feel very scratchy as well. So it could just be that it doesn't like this paper. I'll try it over here and this is its favorite it goes on there very smooth so we've got a huge variety of different products that we've tried different things and we can also gesso this as well so you can even go over your gesso with another gesso a colored gesso or whatever you fancy so say I wanted to uh, background this I could just go over this and then I might want to put, you know, gold stars on it or something. So you can even gesso over the gesso. And a lot of people will use that because they can make the DIY gesso. And that works out cheaper for them in the long run. Or they want to put acrylic paint over it and that makes it a little bit more stickable. So on the Create Space book, we can also gesso over the gesso area. And you can get that in different colours as well. You can also use a white gesso and you can make a white gesso and that'll produce a completely different look. So as always, experiment on something that you're not too keen on and give it a try and see how you go. Until next time, happy colouring.